hey guys, I would like to bring you and join me for a tour to discover one of the few bee farms that are alive in Singapore. But you know what, before I get into that bee farm, this is a beautiful place for a great mind detox. Guys, type in there mind, right? Because more, a lot of times people are focusing on detoxifying what is in the inside, but we forget to detox what is here, right? Detox is not only about how healthy you eat or how much exercise you put in, it's also what goes into our thoughts and what we project our thoughts, right? So first of all, I really like the sound of nature, this beautiful stream here, sound of the water flowing, it's always providing that calm, that calmness, right? Especially we're living in a world that is so busy. Can you hear the sounds of the birds? Amazing, wow, I really love the vibes here. All right, let's go, let's go guys, let's go. Wow, check this out, okay? Some bananas here. It makes me bring back all the memories of my younger childhood days playing in the kampongs. Beautiful. And this is what they call glamping. Check this out. Very cool. These are not your typical tents that inside is hot. There are aircons here, right? Aircons, right? Look at the beautiful barbecue pit. Look at that little pot here, which I'm going to be doing some awesome juicing. Now let's go, let's go, all right? The breeze, all the greenery is awesome. Now, as I get into the next zone, um, I've got to put on my mask, right? So that, you know, I'm getting myself protected. And of course, the next guest, which is going to be hosting us, right? So I'm going to be putting on my mask. And are you guys excited to join me inside? Are you guys excited? Yep, comment in there. Yes, if you're excited. I'm excited today oh, to be discovering so much about honey. Just that it's an ever you know, learning about honey, right? There's never a stop. So much to learn about the bees. So now, okay. Let's go. All right. Hi, Mark. Hey, John. Good Welcome to see you. To All right. Garden. Welcome. This is the man, right? This is, I, I, I call, you know, although it's John, I, for respect, I just call him Uncle John. Okay, John, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me here today in your beautiful place. Most welcome. I feel peace immediately soon as I step in here, right. even without starting the whole discovery journey yet. Yes, thank you. So I'm so excited today because you're going to be showing us, all the audience here, right. so much about honey. And in fact, this is one of the few, you know, bee, beekeeping farm that we have in Singapore. And in fact, I understood from you that you have like, what, five different types of bees? Oh, in Singapore, there are five different types of bees. But okay. right now, I have three of the five types of honeybees in Singapore. All right, yeah. three out of five honeybees. All right, so guys, let's start the tour right now. Okay, so we're going into yeah, like, this, anyway, this dungeon. Is, uh, <laughs> this is not a dungeon. Yeah. This is what I call a bee observatory. Okay. There's no need for me to build this bee observatory. Mm -hmm. But generally, Singaporeans are afraid of bees. Mm. So I built this down here to give assurance to my visitors. Look, you can just hide inside here mm. and you are protected. And let's say if you go inside and then the bees can't harm you at all. All right. But actually, it's, it's just psychological. There's no need for this to happen. Okay. No bees will ever attack us anyway. Mm. So don't worry, the bees will not attack you. You're not a, you're not a flower, so bees won't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we are sweet like honey. Right. Let's okay, go, guys. Come. All right. If you, if you are content staying here, you can just watch from here. Okay, no, I'm, yeah. I'm a bit adventurous today. Okay. I really want to go in and get my hands dirty. Okay, but then, yeah. yeah. By the way, what is all those names, Celine and is that the names? Uh, the name of my beehives. And you, you notice them, they are all female names. Yes. Sorry, no Mark, no Andrew, <laughs> no John. No male names, they're all female. Okay. And why are they all female? Because at the moment right now, all the bees, all the bees are doing all the work, they're all female. I see. And the queen bee is also a female. Mm -hmm. So I want to honor the female. Okay. Because they do all the hard work, they make all the decisions, you see? Yes. Yeah, so, all the hard work done by the females. So it's true, right? The, the woman, not only bees, in real life, woman is very important. Okay, yes. I, initially I thought that was the names of all your girlfriends. Ah, <laughs> no, not, that's, that's uh, always people say, uh, oh, these are my names of my former girlfriends. No, 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 no. <laughs> I name after to honor the female, the females. All right. Yeah. So the next step is I'm going to get myself fully covered in a protective gear. 
um, you know, just that I, so that I can have the possibilities of not being stung and uh, continue the amazing documentaries in the next few days. So I'm going to get dressed up now and we're going to bring you guys inside together with me and John. All right, so okay. let's go. This is where I conduct most of my class. Your class workshops, class workshops, your talks. All my talks over here. Okay. And uh, so is there, is there a name for this place here? You, what, this is call called this my, uh, <laughs> this my B classroom. B classroom. <laughs> and you use literally everything here that is recycled uh, from yeah, pallets. From pallets. Crates. Yeah, crates and things like that. Yeah. So, and they're basically wood, right? And mm -hmm. then that's why you use some of the wood for making uh, the uh, uh, beehives. Nice, yeah. okay. nice. Okay, so of course, oh. I just want to share the, the richness of, you see, the, the bees and then it's from flowers. You see all the various kinds of flowers yep. and different kind of bees that where they go get nectar and pollen from. Mm. And then from there, they produce wonderful honey. Mm. Right. So this is just a, a glimpse of what the beautiful world we have in with all the various types of flowers, various types of nectars. Mm. And that's why you got various types of honey as well. If you come for my honey tasting class, there's one word is banned. Mm. You cannot use the word sweet okay. to describe honey. And what is the right word to use to you describe gotta, honey? You have to get, extend the taste and then go and explore the uniqueness of each and type of different honey. Because each flower, they can produce uh, a different type of distinct taste. Yep. So therefore, we need to train our taste bud to kind of detect it and to increase the vocabulary of just saying, oh, honey Just sweet, sweet, right? Wow. Okay. Guys, type in there. No sweet, okay? No sweet. All right, so thank you. I learned another incredible takeaway here. Now, what, what, what do we have in this part of the wall here? Okay, basically here, just to show you a certain types of bees, all right? Uh, how the bee swarm look like, and then this like Asian giant bee, mm -hmm. and then how, does, uh, how the bee swarm in some local uh, uh, dwarf bees, mm -hmm. and how people keep bees in some uh, frame like that. Mm -hmm. And this is about a colony of bees. And one colony of bees, there are basically three types of bees. You have one, only one colony of bees has only one queen bee. Mm. And then during the mating season, then they only produce about two, three hundred drones. Okay. And the drones just for mating purpose. And then of course, the majority, most of them, most of the time of the year, they are all worker bees, which are all female. All right. And then of course, I shared her pollen. Yep. And the pollen here, you see the different color? Because it, it depends on where they come from. The pollen come from the, the flowers. If the flower has blue pollen, then we got blue pollen back here. You got yellow pollen, then you got yellow pollen. And then they, they, they convert the pollen. The pollen is so important to the bees because they provide proteins and vitamins and minerals, all the nutrients for the baby bees, I especially see. proteins for the baby bees to grow. Ah. Before they can uh, consume the pollen, they have to con convert that a little bit mm. right, to digestible called bee bread. So the baby bees can eat them. Okay, yeah. it's something new. We okay. always talk about honeycomb, uh, but you know, this is bee bread. Guys, type yes. in there, bread. Right, bee yeah, bread. Bee bread. Right. Bee bread and, right? and by the way, John, what is the average lifespan of a bee? Okay, depending on types of bees, but generally, okay, during generally about 50 days, okay, worker bees. Of course, during the winter time, uh, when they're not working too much, it's longer, but generally about that 50 days. Oh, so it's quite sad, yeah. right? They have relatively a very short lifespan. They, they literally eh? them work themselves to death. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> but of course, if it's a queen bee, it lasts longer. Yeah, does it sound familiar? Work ourselves to death? <laughs> Let's relook at life. So <laughs> therefore, therefore, we need to relax a little bit. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and wow, what, so yeah. this is... And uh, of course, uh, they collect nectar. Nectar yep. will convert into honey. Honey mm. is the one that produces... Uh, give them energy to do all the work. Mm. Else without nectar, without carbohydrates, we can't have energy, right? Mm. So the nectar produce honey, honey give, us the, give them the energy to do work. Okay. This is, this is all about the usage of honey. And then of course, I want to share the goodness of honey, all right? And okay. how uh, uh, various colors of honey, right. aromas of honey, right. textures of honey. Right. So it's good to consume. That's why I say we need a, multi-vitamin diet. We need a multi-mineral diet. Same thing, I would also advise, uh, I normally want to take honey from various places, various sources, mm. not just only one source of honey. Mm. Of course, every honey is good. Mm. It all depends on how good the, the beekeeper can maintain the quality of honey. Because basically, honey bees, when they produce honey, all honey, they are excellent. Okay. Any part of the world, okay. they are excellent because they are this part and parcel of the nature. Yes. 
but the quality of honey depends on the individual beekeeper. Whether after harvesting the honey, mm -hmm. you can maintain the quality. When you mention about maintaining the quality, yes. are there specific, you know, simplified ways to say that, okay, this is what the beekeepers have to do to make sure that oh. the quality is maintained? Yes, yes, of course. First thing, you don't harvest the honey premature, prematurely. Alright. Okay, for example, don't like this. Alright. This honey is called cat. You only harvest one thing, you only harvest when the honey is cat. Mm -hmm. When it's kept, means this honey is ripe. This portion of the honeycomb is ripened. How do we know the honeycomb is ripened? If it's ripened, we can determine by the moisture content. The bees actually flap their wings mm. to evaporate the moisture content because when the nectar that they collect has a lot of moisture. Yep. So they need to flap and evaporate the moisture content. All right. And then when the moisture content generally is less than 20%, okay. all right, then they will cap it with a layer of beeswax. But for this part, they haven't kept it yet because it's not ripened yet. Okay. So if a beekeeper were to harvest honey from here, uh -huh. this honey will ferment. Mm. But if you harvest honey from here, this mm. honey can last virtually forever. That's mm. why honey, with a kept honey, you can have almost eternal shelf life. With no expiry date, right? Yeah, yep. we call it eternal shelf life. But then, of course, if you harvest honey from here, oh, of course, you will ferment because too much water. Yes. Yeah. Wow, this is, this is interesting, guys. How many of you guys discovered something new again okay. about this part here, right? Comment in there. I'm so excited now to get into your little yes. farm. So, so I'm going to be putting okay. up some attire here. I just here. want to give you some uh, safety tips first. Okay. Okay, so if the bees happen to come to you, never swat it, okay? Even if the bees happen to go into your suit, whatever, just stay calm. Stay calm. Don't panic. The trick is to stay calm. All right. The bees will not sting you. Okay. Because first thing, you're not a flower. And if they come to you, they just want to drink water from you. Okay. When they drink enough from your sweat, they will just fly away. I see. Okay. Then, of course, no rapid movement, right? No fast movement. You stay calm, you're okay. All right. All right. We are all dressed up now. Uh, although John is the hero, he's like the Rambo. He says he's been stung, what? Over, what? How many times? 100 times. 100 times, or probably more. Right, and I've, you know, my whole life, I've only been stung once. Okay. And it freaked me out until today, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to put on this attire so that I do not freak out, but, um, yep, let's go. Those who come to be a maze garden, I uh, make sure nobody will be stung by bees. Yeah. Okay, but you have to put on protective gears. And <laughs> I, I'm glad today I got the Rambo with me, and my life is in his hands, and I know that if I'm with John, I'm going to be safe, right? No matter what, bees come. Okay. Even though I'm sweet. <laughs> let's go, all right. Yeah. So come, Mark, we will examine Eunice. Okay, so Eunice here, and when we are working with the bees, we try not to stand on the flight path. They, they have a direct flight path. Okay. So the flight path is from here all the way up there. So as long as we don't disturb the flight path, it's okay. We can go to the back, let's say when I'm at the back. Normally when I stand at the back, they can't see me. Uh, you don't stand and do, so don't stand in front uh, flight here, okay? Just about the side is okay. Alright. Okay, so John, mm -hmm. um, now, before we open that magical box yes. and you unleash the Kraken, so mm -hmm. what happens here is that these are all wild bees, right? Literally, yes. they, they just fly around. Exactly. They, they are, they're wild, they're random, they can go all the way to forage and then they'll come back. Each night, they will come back. The foraging bee will come back here. How do they know that this is the place that they have to come back and not okay, fly off somewhere and they don't come each back? Each of them has an, uh, a queen. Okay. A queen has its own uh, pheromone. Uh. A pheromone is like a perfume, right? A, a distinct, uh, a distinct to, uh, uh, from everybody else, a unique pheromone. Mm -hmm. And then they can recognize the, the pheromone. I see. And that uniqueness right, of the pheromone, they will come back to that unique hive that it belongs to. Wow, interesting. Right. Okay. Okay. So, and I keep these using the African top bar. So the they see here the entrance is. Mm -hmm. If they, uh, generally they have they are very systematic. Normally they have brood first, then they have pollen, and then they have honey. All right. But uh, this is still young. All right. So it's a mixture. Okay. Let me open. So uh, top bar means generally like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they will build from this out of this bar. They will build a honeycomb on this surface here. Okay, now let's I open up and let's examine what is inside. I get a honeycomb for you and then you can take a picture with the bees. Oh, that's fun. All right. right. And and by the way, because this is man-made, right? Yes. What if it's in the nature? How do they get this box? 
Oh, in the nature, they go into the hollow of trees. Mm -hmm. In nature, they go to the crevices and in the caves, mm -hmm. uh, in rocks. Okay. Right, whatever hollow. Any, so that in nature, there's a lot of all this uh, empty space as well. So they will go in. But then in Singapore, they go into our post box. They go into our uh, cupboards. Yep. Right. Any uh, into our rooftops, whatever em empty space, they will go into it. But literally, the whole process is the same, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now the trick is to normally beekeepers to smoke the bees. I don't smoke my bees because I'm using for education. So if I keep on smoking the bees, I'm telling the bees this is a dangerous place. So much smoke, <laughs> right? Right. Okay. So I don't smoke the bees, but then I handle them slowly, so I won't agitate them. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, when you hold them, you just hold it vertically like that. Don't try to turn it this way because the honeycomb is so heavy. Yep. You turn it this way, you will just drop off. They can uh, because they are also very soft. All right, just hold it straight. Okay, let me uh, bring it up and show you. And the bees will be clinging on to one another as they build a honeycomb. Wow, there must be thousands of them in there. Yes. You see, now they're building the honeycomb. Let me bring them to you, and then you can hold on both ends here. Okay. Okay, just hold both ends. And then you see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, on top, that's where you see some liquid stuff. That's where they're collecting the nectar. And slowly that one will change into honey. So as they collect the nectar, yes. so for the for the purpose of the audience, right? Right. I could still see the honeycomb here is empty on the sides. Those are just newly built. Newly built. Yes. And as they collect the pollens, ah, they so, will continue to fill it up. Okay, this one is basically for honey. Okay. The pollen could be a uh, little bit this and the pollen, a little bit brownish at the end. Ah, Those are the pollen. I see. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. And these are all female bees. Mm. Yeah. So the queen must be inside the somewhere. The queen is somewhere, not here, but somewhere inside there laying eggs. And yeah. it, it, it is literally the biggest of course, size. The biggest right? size, correct. Yeah. Wow. So how do you actually harvest the honey then? So for example, when it's all this, let's say this honeycomb is fully capped, fully ripened, and then I'll just cut out the honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I have a little, I can just squeeze them out. Or I can just eat them from the uh, from the from from the honeycomb. Right. Or I can just squeeze them out. Yep. Then of course, if you're a commercial beekeeper, you have more honey. You you have too much to handle. Then you need to have an extractor. Well, that's the reason why what you just shared with with me a moment ago. By the way, for all the audience here, does it make sense that with this amount, it is impossible for us to be self-sustainable in terms of supplying honey locally? You know, for Singaporeans, it's just not. Possible, At the moment, right? not possible yet, but I hope to change the situation. Mm -hmm. That's why I invite Singaporeans to come and become bee friendly. And then we set up more bee sanctuary all over Singapore. Wow. And you have a garden, yep. and you have a rooftop, yep. you have a, a farm, you have a factory. You can uh, consider uh, turning that into a bee friendly sanctuary. Wow. Just like what I do with uh, Sentosa Golf Club. That is a very good vision. Um, guys, make sure you guys be part of this. All right. So, wow, guys. Uh, you see how calm they are? Yeah, yeah. When we treat them gently, they are gentle to us. If we treat them... So, don't kanchong. Ah. Yeah, the key don't is kan don't kanchong, ah, guys, when you're no, calm. No, ah. just be calm. Just relax, right? So, you stay right? calm. Yep. You just treat them nicely, they treat you well. Right. In fact, I can imagine if I'm not in this protective gear, actually, I'll be fine. Yes. Yeah, hmm. Even, but then, of course, just to be safe. Still just to be safe. Right. All right. Can be agitated by noise, mm -hmm. and then uh, we are agitated by noise. They can be, they can come and sting us as well. Don't forget, these are still wild, wild insects. Okay. Yep. So we always have to practice safety okay. first. Uh. I'm gonna pass you back this okay. precious thing. All right. Okay. Wow. Okay, let me put it back slowly. I cannot be fast. Any fast movement, it will agitate them. Mm. And and what are Almost what coming. are these bees outside of the box? Oh, those here, are the guard bees. Yeah. Those are the guard bees to prevent other colonies of bees from stealing the honey. Okay. Now let us say uh, my the next uh, the the hive next door. So Judy can't come in here. Judy can't come in here. If Judy want to go in there, uh, these these bees will try to chase them away. Okay. And 
this this guard beast also protect from any other form of yeah let's say uh, uh, honey animals or anything that's trying yes, to get in here anything right? try to steal the honey the the uh, they will just uh, so chase them away this is your pinkyan lah huh? yeah <laughs> But, uh, that's why you see, that's like we need a, a, arm, a strong arm forces, arm, arm force, right? Arm forces. These are our SAF. These are SAF. Let's say there are two colonies of bees. One colony of bees is really very weak. Mm. Let's say only 5,000. Another colony is 40,000 or 50,000. The 50,000 kind of strong colony of bees will go and rob the bees from the weaker one. Mm. So, uh, therefore, we need to, that's why we need to have the guard, they need to have guard bees too. To, to guard the border, so to speak. Mm. Okay. And okay. how long does it take, you know, before you start harvesting the honey here? Okay, how long? Uh, uh, as I mentioned, I don't harvest my honey here, but other places I'll harvest them. But it all depends on the surrounding situation. Okay. If the surrounding situation, there are no flowers, then of course you can't harvest at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so, uh, of course, most of us, we want to have honey. But I'm not so keen in harvesting honey because basically the honey is for the bees. I only will harvest them when they prove to have excess amount of honey. Then I will take the excess. But on average, are we looking at what 30 days, 60 days? Oh, based on in, the average in Singapore, duration? In, in other places during the what they call honey flow, mm. you have lots of honey. But then in Singapore, we don't we don't have this luxury. Uh, at the moment, I restrict my honey for education purpose, not for honey harvesting. I see. Okay. So I just give all my honey for my bees. Alright, so John, what is your biggest challenge in beekeeping? Okay, before I talk about the challenges about beekeeping, alright? So let me show you another type of bees. Okay. You've seen the local honey bees, the yep. Apis serrana. I yep. show you the dwarf honey bees. Why, why are they called dwarf? Because they are really dwarf. They are the, one of the smallest honey bees. Okay. Okay, they are, I keep them in a cage, but then with so that with uh, they can fly in and out. If we come over here, you can see them. All right, they're just hanging over there. Can you see them? Oh yeah. One single honeycomb hanging there. Right. Oh, they, yeah, they are shorter. Okay, they are smaller. Smaller. The color is the color of brighter this. in terms of the orange part. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, there's a, this is the red dwarf honeybees, and there's red dwarf honeybees. They, they like to form only a single honeycomb. Okay. The single honeycomb is like on the branch itself. Mm. Right? And then the, those that are jutting from below the branch, those are the uh, honeycomb for the baby bees. Is there a difference in taste compared to the earlier type of bees? Yes. Uh, the good thing about honey is it depends on so many local conditions, local types of bees, local type of uh, flower, soy and things like that. And uh, so it's good. The, the taste is slightly different as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Although they are they are also sweet mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then, but they are very distinct. Okay. Uh, sweetness. You know, instead of those boxes, one where the, the 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 queen is somewhere in there. So am I right to say that the queen will be somewhere here? Yes, the queen is somewhere here, just going around trying to lay eggs, right? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you see whether you can see them or not. Okay, I'm not going to go too close, yeah. although I'm protected, but... Okay, okay. but then, uh, the only thing about this one, because they're dwarf, they, 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 they can grow up to the A4 size uh, paper. Wow, uh, you, you know what, guys? This is a great way to lose weight also by visiting the farm here because I'm sweating like in a sauna. Right. I'm burning a lot of calories today just by wearing this suit. So now, <laughs> by the way, now we are yep. away from the bees, right? Yep. Actually, we can take off our hood. Okay, so... Um, John just told me that it's safe to remove my protective gear. Yeah, now we are away from the bees, at least yeah. about uh, one, two meters away. Safe, social distancing. Social ah, distancing, and by the way, safe I, distancing. Yeah, I, I feel safe as well. <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm, I'm literally taking out my, yeah, my jacket we can, here. We can, we can All right, take out the and jacket here. Yes. Uh, what I can't wait to experience next is your incredible honey that you have here. Oh, I can't wait to tell you about the honey too. Okay, Come, let's, go and, yeah, let's yeah. go and have some tasting here. All right. Okay, wonderful. Okay, wow. Come. Oh. Woo! Okay, I'm so excited. Now back to your humble crib and right. we'll be doing some honey tasting, I believe. Right. So now we have, what, five different colours yes. here. What does um, it represent? Okay, first thing I'm so uh, honoured and this I want to share with you. This are my, this is my, these are all my own brand of honey. Mm. And uh, my honey, the brand of my honey is called My Honey. Okay. And I have five different flavours. So that, that, that's the reason why, because it's from different flowers. Yes. And that's the reason yeah, why the colours are different. Correct. Okay. Right. So of course, honey, first thing, you cannot be have sugar added. Yep. 
all right? Because you can easily add sugar, you can add corn syrup, uh, rice syrup, whatever kind yes. of sugar into yes. it. So basically, generally, uh, the sucrose level should be less than uh, uh, 5%. Okay. If the sucrose level is more than 5%, generally, it shows that sample of honey have been adulterated. Some maybe generally some uh, sugar, artificial sugar or cane sugar has added into it. Mm -hmm. And the second thing about grape honey is like, whereby we heard about honey can have an eternal shelf life. Definitely. Why yeah. honey have, but then not all honeys, not all honeys will have eternal shelf life. Mm -hmm. The most critical point is that honey must have less than 20% moisture content. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the lower, the, the better. For example, uh, in some European countries, they, they, they have more stringent requirement, good honey. Honey is about 18%, the moisture content is about 18% of moisture content. Where it's greater than, when, when, when the honey moisture content is more than 20%, you lead to fermentation after a few months. So as a layman, yes. how can I tell if the moisture content is above 20%? As a layman, unfortunately, you can't tell. You are at the mercy of whoever is selling you <laughs> the honey. So okay. but don't go think that you need to uh, understand where your honey comes from. Mm. Of course, make friends with a, a trustworthy honey bee beekeeper and uh, observe the behavior of the beekeeper whether the person is trustworthy or not True. and then that most of the time all this come to lab tests all right yep. also of course uh, you should get some lab tests as well yep all right and then the, for, to a lab test at our health report right we can tell the the all these uh, parameters but then through the lab test you get a, there's another test called the hmf hydroxymethyl furfural dehydrate all right so that one is to show you if your honey has been heat treated, that, uh, that indicator will show this is too high. Understand. When the rating is too high, more than 40 milligram per kilo, that mm. means it's heat damage. Mm. Heat damage, of course, all the goodness of honey is basically gone, managed, gone right? so yep. it's useless. Mm. Then, of course, good honey also you should have uh, not have any uh, harmful contaminants mm. like uh, pesticide, antibiotics, and heavy metals, right? All right. So all those are harmful to health, all right? So sure. wow, thank you. Mm. So I think this is really, really helpful information for all the viewers here. Right. And there is always this statement that you know most of us receive from our friends, our family, saying that another indicator of whether it's a real honey or not is by looking. You know, are they are they attracting any ants? Now, is that a truth or is that a myth? Okay, let me show you my honey over there. That's if you have examined some of my honey over there, right? Yes. Sometimes I relocated bees and then I, I spill some, accidentally spill some of the honey. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I attract a lot of ants. And uh, as a result, the ants chase away my, my honey <laughs> and my bees. Okay? okay. So, good honey, ants, they're all sweet. So, uh, so guys, that is a myth. Yeah, I, I think that's a myth. I don't know why. I don't understand why people say good honey, no. <laughs> all these very different colors that are natural right right because it comes from different flowers now is there a reason why mm. you know earlier you you know while while you're preparing all of this for my for my tasting you you said that you know what i gotta keep the caps on instead okay. of opening it up is there a reason so for basically it? honey you honey hygroscopic that means it can absorb moisture from the air mm -hmm. that's why the bees use so much effort use so much effort to uh, evaporate the moisture content so Whenever possible, cap the honey, all right? After use, you cap it so that you won't absorb moisture from the air. And, and Uncle John, what I would really like to hear from you next right. would be coming back on what are the challenges that you face, you know, in the many years of doing what you're doing here mm. right now. And uh, I really want to understand why, why honey, right? Why bees of all things? Shall we head to a different sure. part of, of your crib now and I want to hear more about you. All right, sure. All right, thank you. Okay. So, John, yes. um, what has been your biggest challenge All right. as a beekeeper? Okay, the biggest beekeeper challenge in Singapore is because first thing, we cannot buy bees. In other countries, if you are a beekeeper, you can just go to an established beekeeper and tell them, okay, I want 20, 30, 100 hives. Can you sell it to me? and then bring it to your farm and then you just open it up and voila, you're so-called a beekeeper. So in Singapore, I have to get all the bees myself. Mm. I literally have, uh, practically not literally, I practically go all over Singapore. When there's sighting of bees in their homes, uh, the offices or school, they will call the pest control to exterminate them. 
But then now I offer bee relocation services where I go and get the bees from there and then I bring them over here. <laughs> bee relocation services, that's smart. Yeah. Wow. So in fact, I'm the first company in Singapore that mm. provided the first ever bee relocation training for a pest control company called Origin. Mm. That they don't kill the bees, but they relocate bees. Okay. Uh, again, has there been times that you felt like giving up in what you're doing or tell yourself that, oops, Perhaps it's something that you oh. didn't expect it to be. Uh, no, no. Uh, of course, it's difficult when I first started, all right, because no bees, and then sometimes I need bee educator. So I need to use bees for education. If I have no bees, how, to, how can I educate? And the people want to see bees when they come here. And sometimes the bees just abscond for no rhyme and reason. And then sometimes also they are affected by ants, they are affected by wax moth, and the bees just they all get abscond. But somehow, Whenever I have a lesson, I will always have bees. And people will call me, just for example, I have a lesson next week and I need bees. And then, now suddenly I got no more bees, then somebody somewhere will call me, Oh, John, there are bees in my house. Can you please come and get them away? And then, wow, you see, I always have bees. It's a challenge now to get the newer, younger generations to, to a certain extent, do what we are doing, right? Or what you are doing, right? Mm. Maybe for part-times, okay, but as a long-term career, um, they may not see this as a sexy occupation or career. And I hope to start a movement in Singapore whereby uh, this movement is to educate our, our young ones, to move with them, okay? When you have a dream, go for it and don't let anything deter you. Yes. Right? Go for it. Also because, you see, look at bees. Bees are so important. And in Singapore, there's so many things we can learn from bees. For example, we say, Singapore, we say uh, we are tiny fishing village, no natural resources. I beg to differ. We have natural resources. The natural resources are found in the, in the jungles, in our nature reserve, and also found in the bees. Mm. And then, you see, with NPARKS, perhaps I could collaborate with our, our government agency like uh, NPARKS, right? Then we have one million uh, bee, in, uh, one million trees initiative, right? Mm. Turn all this one million trees initiative into bee-friendly trees and mm. bee-friendly plants and bee-friendly parks all over, the, all over Singapore. And then we will be able to produce some, maybe not me, I hope you're the first Singaporean to produce Singapore honey. If I cannot do so, I hope to inspire the next generation, the younger wow. Singaporean to produce Singapore honey. Wow. And then where we can have bee sanctuary everywhere, in every gardens, in every park, in every rooftop, in every factory. Wow. So this I hope to inspire and this is a movement I want to start. I want to perhaps use my uh, knowledge I have to encourage a one little, some of them, they could, some of our children, you see, they're always this, 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 type of, uh, some academically inclined or oh, they right. want to go to university. Right. What if I don't have university degree? Uh? But then if you don't have university degree, don't worry, you be a good beekeeper, you maintain a bee well, you will be in demand all over the world. John, I, I, I really you know, respect the vision you have, yeah. you know, um, and I, I, I wish you all the best, you know, hopefully that we are able to see our own Singaporean produced honey you know, in the coming future. Um, what are the last words that you have for all the viewers here today? If there is only one thing that you want to leave everyone with today, what would that be? Oh, live life to the fullest. I live life to the fullest and then be the best that you ought to be. <laughs> and the B, by the way, beekeeper spell B, double E, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much you. for the opportunity to have you. Um, and guys, if you all love, you know, what you have discovered today and you want to experience this physically, which I highly recommend you guys to experience this physically. It's, it's awesome. I can't put it into words here. You got to be here to experience it yourself. Make sure to check out Be Amazed. Um, and of course, we'll be arranging with you guys as well for our community. Right, when it's safe, when it's all reopened up again, so that you can bring your family, friends, colleagues, right, um, everyone else here to come for an educational tour right. to experience yourself and meet John, the man. Um, he's an amazing guy. Guys, make sure you check it out and share these incredible discoveries that you had here with everyone else that you know because if you believe that John's vision is critical for us in Singapore, make sure we spread the words out, right? So I'm signing out now. This is Mark Leong here and John from Be Amazed. See you guys in the next episode. Okay, bye. Bye.